As long as an early August flight to Orlando with 10 screaming babies behind you might seem, it's not the longest flight in history. In fact, the longest flight ever is not even the 8,000 mile trip from Dubai to San Francisco or even the 9,000 mile flight from Auckland to Doha. It wasn't even that time when Pakistan International Airlines flew from Hong Kong to London the wrong way round, or even that time in 2005 when a pilot circumnavigated the world from Kansas to Kansas nonstop, or even that time in 2006 when this same pilot flew from Florida to England with an extra circumnavigation for good measure. The longest flight in history started in 1958 in a single engine Cessna 172 over the skies of New Mexico and didn't end until 1959. In 1956, the Hacienda Hotel opened in Las Vegas, Nevada, but it had a problem. It really wasn't in a good place. I mean a good place within Vegas, animator. All the popular casinos were over a mile north, so the owners desperately needed publicity. Luckily, one of the slot machine mechanics, Robert Tim, came up with an idea. He was going to break the flight endurance record and the Hacienda Hotel was going to help. In exchange for prominently painting Hacienda on the side of the plane, the owners of the hotel gave Tim $100,000 to fund the flight. Now with money, Robert Tim bought a used Cessna 172 and got to work on some modifications. He installed an extra 95 gallon fuel tank, modified the oil line so he could replace the oil while in flight, and removed everything from the interior but the pilot seat. He then put a small mattress in the front and a small sink in the rear, and lastly, he replaced the engine with a brand new one and he was good to go. But then he received some bad news. Jim Heath and Bill Burkhart had just landed their plane in Dallas after 50 days in the air. The record to beat was now four days longer. But the good news is that Tim found a co-pilot, John Cook. No, not professional golfer John Cook or former mayor of El Paso John Cook. This John Cook, experienced airline pilot and mechanic John Cook. The pair finished up their alterations and then took off on National Cookie Day. That's December 4th if you're out of the know. Bound for nowhere but the record books. For the first few days, they flew the plane just around Las Vegas so they would have an airport to land at in case of issues. But soon after, they ventured south to fly over the deserts of California and Arizona. But what I'm sure you're wondering is how they were fueled. They didn't do air-to-air -air refueling and it wasn't a solar power airplane or anything like that. Robert Tim and John Cook refueled their airplane on their record-breaking attempt by matching speed with a pickup truck and dropping a fuel line down. For a full three minutes, twice per day, the truck and plane went along a deserted stretch of highway like that. For food, the restaurant of the Hacienda Hotel prepared gourmet meals that were hoisted up to the airplane by rope. The pair took turns flying for four hours, then sleeping for the next four. The flight initially went smoothly. Christmas and the New Year came and went with no major mechanical issues, but the isolation and exhaustion from the flight started to get to the pilots. Cessnas are small and loud, hardly a good home for weeks upon weeks. On day 36, the pair narrowly avoided disaster. In the early hours of the morning, Cook was having his rest while Tim was in the pilot seat flying the plane, until he dozed off. Luckily, the autopilot was engaged, so the plane flew for a full hour halfway to the Mexican border before Tim woke up. On day 39, the generator failed, which meant the plane had no heat, no light, and no autopilot. But they were nearing the record. 11 more days of flying passed. Then, on day 50, January 23rd, the Hacienda Cessna 172 broke the record for the longest continuous flight in history. But they weren't done yet. Tim and Cook pressed on, determined to make their record last. As 50 days became 60, the engine started to become weaker and weaker as carbon clogged the combustion chambers, and they could barely gain any altitude. It was time to land. So, on February 7th, 1959, after 64 days, 22 hours, and 19 minutes, and 150,000 miles of flying, the Hacienda Cessna 172 touched back down at McCarran Field and cemented its place in the record books, a record that still stands today. If you want to break the flight endurance record, you'll need a solid